perpetrators are men, so you find it is those women living with those men who are beating them, so they will continue reporting, so the cycle is there. Then for men, it's as usual, they don't want to speak about it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Michael, we finally have some stats here. Okay, what men go through, uh, and uh, I think the majority don't talk about it, is uh, not necessarily physical violence, but emotional and psychological uh, violence and, um, or abuse. And uh, they are unable to talk about it. But as, 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 as I said earlier on, uh, we, we, we are trying as, a, as an organization to actually help them uh, address the issues within uh, the, the, their setup so that they are able to, to discuss it openly. Most definitely. Yeah. All right, so we have a minute left. I need to get your closing remarks. I'll start with you, Diana, in 30 seconds. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I would just say it's important for you to live if it is not working because you got a life to live. And also I'd like to clarify, according to the Kenya Demographic Health Survey 2022, the numbers for FGM went down from 21% to around, I think, 15%. So we went down with 6%. So we are working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're doing good. Yes. Senator? I would just call again for no more excuses to why we're not investing in addressing the issue of gender-based violence. We all have a role to play. So I would just really call everyone to step up and be a champion. Most to definitely. Address this. Mr. Michael, you get the last say. OK, thank you very much. I would say that uh, uh, as a person from the community where we're engaging men, we require more resources to actually engage men in prevention and actually transform their lives so that they understand or identify that uh, violence does not uh, work out in any kind of situation. Sure. Most definitely. Great place to end it. Violence does not work out in any kind.